Hi folks, thanks for joining me. Thanks to Mega Bikes in Dublin, I've got my hands on an Aprilia Touareg 660 for the day. I've been dying to get on board one of these. So without further ado, join me after the sting. So at long last, I'm on board the Aprilia Touareg, the 660. I've literally been on the bike for three minutes here and uh, my first thoughts straight away the riding position is absolutely beautiful although you know that feeling when you've been riding or driving around in a car pretty much all your life and then you step out and get into uh, a jeep a 4 before, and you suddenly feel as though you've just walked upstairs it's the similar feeling on this bike I think it is the tallest bike I've ever ridden Many of you probably know that I'm an Aprilia RS 660 owner, so the first thing for me is I'm really curious about the engine because I know they've used the same engine, they've just retuned it. In fact, the engine has 20% less ponies at 80 horsepower compared to the RS 660, but the increase in torque at the bottom end has just given this engine an adrenaline injection. The difference is, well, to put it simply, like a different engine. I'll go over the exact dimensions and tech blurb later in the review with my infamous spec check. But this smooth, wide power band controlled with a ride-by-wire throttle has already stretched my grin into a smile. Um, steering is absolutely gorgeous. Really nice, light, agile. I don't know where I'm going here, I'm just trying to get out of Dublin to be honest. Um, but yeah, the steering is beautiful. Hopefully uh, I'll put that to the test a little bit more later on, but again, first impressions. And uh, just sitting rock solid, I know I'm only in between sort of 40 and 60 kilometers per hour at the minute. But yeah, the riding position, arms beautifully spaced apart sitting upright loads of space for my legs but then at five foot eight and a 30 inch inseam i'm just on the verge of being that little bit too short for this bike especially with its 860 millimeter seat height however it has made me a very welcome visitor on board and i'm comfortable even though stopping at lights i'm on my tiptoes Okay, first confession, when I saw the press photographs of this bike on its release, I really didn't like the look of it. And that is my number one thing I always go for with any bike. But then months later, I saw it in the showroom and thought, okay, now we're talking. It's like an Aprilia market employ to me, that their PR doesn't do it justice until you see it in real life. I was the same with the RS660. This is my favourite colour, it's Martian Red, but it also comes in Acid Gold and Evocative, which attracts a price supplement. On that note, the current prices here in Ireland at Megabikes for this Touareg are €13,799 for the Martian Red and also for the Acid Gold, and then €14,495 for the Evocative. Um, I'd read a couple of reports about uh, the screen not being big enough to read all of the information. Well, at my age, I've got a bit of a dodgy eyesight problem going on, um, but I can read the screen, no problem. It's also lovely and bright, and as you can see, we're out on a very sunny day, but I can read all of the information, even the small print of the exterior temperature and the time. So um, that's good. Bearing in mind, I, uh, I can barely read my phone screen. One optional add-on I would buy straight away if I was to own one of these would be the quick shifter and blipper. That would just finish the bike for me, even though the clutch is nice and light. Now one thing I am noticing, every time I stop and pull away, maybe it's just the way I ride, but I sort of keep my feet down and drag them for a foot or so, and I hadn't realised that until now. But the pillion pegs behind me keep digging into my uh, calves. Which, uh, which isn't great. In fact, as I was pulling away from the uh, from mega bikes to take this away for the day, I noticed that uh, the uh, the right hand side pillion peg got caught in the top of my boot. So <laughs> I um, I'd, be, I'd be taking them off straight away, unless you ride pillion quite a bit, of course. But even moving it around as well, you can 
feel the pegs digging into the back of your calves not a problem you can get rid of them okay I'm just gonna slow down for a bit of a fueling test I'm uh, doing nearly 30 kilometers an hour in third gear uh, just to check to see if it's coughing and spluttering or if the fuel injection is hunting and it's not it's rock solid I'm just gonna move it up into fourth still rock solid so fueling is absolutely bang on there no problems at all with that so around town I suspect this would be uh, an, a dream so fueling all good right we'll carry on what a gorgeous day to be out on a gorgeous bike this is really beautiful the sound of that engine. <laughs> I love the sound of that engine. The bark! One thing I've noticed already coming to stop at junctions is the uh, the dive. I'll show you here. <sighs> wow. Well, first of all, <laughs> the, brake, the brakes are amazing. But then the uh, Brembo's. Oh, I could just listen to that soundtrack all day. I hope you're picking it up on the microphone. But yes, the dive in the in the front forks, well, there's 240 millimeter of travel in both sets of uh, suspension setups. It's really good. So there's, um, there is a lot of dive. I quite like that. It's nice and smooth, a bit different to the BM, where you have that telelever suspension, it sort of balances out and sits the whole bike um, horizontal. But then I shouldn't be comparing this to a BMW GS. This, the, the competitor for this bike really is the Tenere 700. Um, this has a lot more electronics. This has uh, four riding modes. Uh, two of them are customizable. So you have the, the one I'm in now, the Explore. Then you have um, Urban. Then you have off-road. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll tip through them. That's the great thing uh, as well. I think you can tweak your riding modes as you're riding along. So there's urban, off-road, and individual, and explore. When you go into off-road, it disables the, um, the rear ABS, and it softens up the front ABS. So. That's the beautiful thing about electronics these days. <laughs> really does uh, look after all your needs. It doesn't have an IMU. Um, I'm not sure you'd need it to be honest. This isn't the sort of bike you'd be leaning over, scraping your knee around a corner. So I'm sure you can manage without an IMU. Can you imagine the days before the IMUs on motorbikes? What on earth did we do? How could we steer the bikes around the corners? <laughs> Wing mirrors are really, really good. So clear. They, uh, I can't even see my elbows, let alone my shoulders. Um, they stick out nice and far and wide. Haven't had a chance really to take the bike up to speed yet to see if there's any buzziness buzziness but uh, certainly riding around at 60 70 kilometers an hour there's no buzziness not even in the seats not the pegs nothing I'm very happy sitting in this throne like I keep saying the riding position is beautiful I ca but I can't believe how nimble the bike is it's 184 kilograms dry it's over 200 kg wet so I know it's not massively heavy what helps um, the balance of the bike a lot is that the fuel uh, tank is down low. So I wonder if we can find a little dirt lane somewhere around here. Ooh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Love to take it off road. <laughs> I, I nearly slipped up between the rocks there, and I thought, yeah, well, does that look good? 
all blocked off I suspect there's a lot of bikers get up these parts looking for somewhere to go off road well hopefully during the course of this review I'll be able to green lane it a bit why do I keep talking over that beautiful engine row right I'm having a little look in there carry on for the minute actually now the acceleration is unbelievable at a little bit of speed there you can definitely feel the buffeting on the helmet I'd really wish I brought the showy helmet with no peak but then saying that this sort of helmet is suited right where are we going here can I get through there I think we can. Let's put it into off-road. There we go. Let's have a little look up here. Oh, the back end sliding around lovely there. Taking it handy because uh, this is a demo bike I just want to see how it soaks up the lumps and bumps and uh, so far it's doing a great job definitely feel the back end uh, sliding around a bit but it's good feedback through the bars and it's soaking up the lumps and bumps I suspect the camera is staying fairly smooth but Believe me, there are a good few lumps and bumps there. Let's go left and try try this. Got to be careful. It's a lovely day. There's going to be a lot of walkers out today, but I'll take it handy. Oh, yes. This would eat anything up. I ain't getting any further here either. I could take this anywhere. Unfortunately, my time constraints with the loan of the bike for the day meant that I couldn't go in search of any more green lanes, which was a real shame because the short burst that I did give it, it was just brilliant. Now let's listen to that roar and the pullback. Don't want to scare that cyclist. Imagine that. Oh, God. This is brilliant. Now, I can't wait to take it uh, on a motorway because I'm really getting the feeling already in the short time I've been on this machine that, uh, well, it's a sort of jack of all trades and uh, a master of everything. <laughs> That's the impression it's given me. If it offered the opportunity to sort of go away touring and sit on motorways quite nicely. I mean, it's got cruise control as well. So it's it's got everything you need in terms of the electronics package and the luxury as well. Now, for, the, for those of you who followed me for a while, you'll know when I do a bike review, one of the first things I always look for is the comfort of the seat. And let me tell you, it's always a problem. 99% of the time, it's always a problem especially on the Yamahas I've reviewed. But this seat, well, the reason I haven't even talked about it at the top of the review is because I haven't noticed it, which means it's past my test anyway. It's past my posterior test. <laughs> Top marks to the seat. It's so comfortable. And that's what, oh, the brakes are amazing. That's what I mean about this being an all-rounder. I'd be quite happy sitting for hours on end on a motorway. So let's recap. It's very light and nimble through the houses, as you saw earlier, and I wouldn't hesitate to ride it through busy towns on a commute. It's like a snake on the twisties, and again, so reactive, so flickable. Therefore, to complete the trilogy, if it feels good on a motorway and offers me the level of comfort my precious self requires and would allow me to go touring, then surely that qualifies it as the perfect all-rounder. 
I'm really interested to know about the um, the uh, touring possibilities on this bike and uh, I hope you can read the screen there I'm sitting very happy at 100 kilometers per hour I'm in sixth gear I'm doing just over 4,000 revs so there's loads left in this I reckon I could uh, easily take it up to 115 miles per hour but uh, you know all in all with the comfort of the seat and uh, basically the, the riding position I'd be very happy to go away on this for a, for a few days so I, I was recently away on the GS I went down to West Cork which is a five and a half hour ride from where I live in Ireland and I thought to myself there's not many bikes which could do this actually I'm now thinking I've just found the second bike which could do that my my only slight hesitation and I think it's because of the helmet I'm wearing today uh, is that there's a lot of buffeting so uh, I'm sure that's more to do with the peak on the helmet it'll be interesting to try this with my showy helmet but saying that I know uh, there'll be a third party you know windscreen extension bit uh, to, to go on there which would hopefully direct the wind around you but uh, sitting at 100 kilometers an hour here I mean no it's rock solid uh, no problems at all and uh, obviously it's something to do with the airflow of the bike because as light and as agile as the steering is when I'm riding slowly it, se it seems to have just stiffened up beautifully uh, now I know um, well I presume that's not within the electronics um, uh, but uh, I, I suspect it's more to do with the airflow around the bike but uh, it, it sort of works proportional to the speed that I'm doing really impressed with that so there you go that's my weekends away sorted as well <laughs> Okay, kicking off in the heavyweight corner, well actually in fact not too heavyweight, it's 187 kilograms dry and 204 kilograms fully wet. This already makes it a lot more conducive to off-roading compared to its bigger Lita Plus adventure style bikes which in my opinion are just too heavy for the average rider to go bare grills. The 21 inch front and the 18 inch rear tubeless rims also give a huge nod to the mud. If that's not enough to scream please take me off road, then the 240mm ground clearance and the 240mm front and rear suspension travel will swallow the lumps and bumps effortlessly. Back on the highway and the 18 litre tank and the 65 miles to the gallon capability will surely get you a range of around 180 miles and also in huge comfort. The massive 860mm tall seat which is lovely and deep for the bigger backside is also nice and thin towards the tank enabling us short asses to touch the deck but also allows a nice grip to the bike when off-roading and standing up. The different ride modes and mapping offer a more than capable bike for any eventuality and customizable modes too mean that this machine is truly adaptive. The engine braking and the traction control are features which all add to the joy of riding. All this info is relayed through the 5 inch TFT which is very bright and large enough for all the info to be read. Of course the ride by wire throttle twists all of this into action with smooth feedback and doesn't miss a beat. Now at the heart of this beauty is the 659cc parallel twin 270 degree crank engine retuned to provide 80 horsepower and 70 newton meters of torque. It really is impressive and then it provides the growl you've just heard to remind you that it means business. The screen in my opinion, well it's a shame it's non-adjustable because even at my height I think it's too short and doesn't throw enough of the wind around me. The Pirelli Scorpion tyres are a decent offering but you'll want to change these out if you're serious about off-roading but then saying that the bike is also serious on the road so I suppose in fairness these tyres are a fair all-rounder. Just not exceptional at anything. What is exceptional though is the finish on this bike, the paintwork, the lighting, the overall design, it all just oozes quality, research and the future of this refreshing mid-range adventure bike like the Touareg 660. Phew! Actually, hold on. 
before we move on, let's do a quick height check. So again, I'm 5 foot 8 inches with a 30 inch inseam and I'm 190 pounds, even though I'm working on that. Um, I'm just wearing my former adventure boots with no built up insole. These bloody pillion pegs though are far too close and are really annoying. Now you can adjust the suspension front and rear. Actually there's a very handy little uh, manual dial to adjust the rear suspension and uh, you adjust the front suspension as normal, you know. <laughs> Normally with a credit card <laughs> in the top of both forks. Great place to stop for a picnic. Scenery stunning here. This is just outside of Dublin, can you believe that? We're in the Dublin mountains. But it is a very exciting engine, This the pickup is phenomenal. In fact, why don't I show you? God, you literally, you need strong arms when you slam the brakes on on this. Why don't I show you just from standstill? I'll also try and be quiet uh, so you can uh, hear the engine. And just, just watch this pickup. down because there's a runner but I hope you got the sense of that I, I mean I'm sure my arms are an inch longer after that I have to say I'm noticed when I'm riding around at slow speeds here there's an awful lot of heat on my on the bottom of my right leg um, I don't know if that's from well I suspect I do know it's probably from the the Euro 5 catalytic converter. But uh, yeah, a lot of heat and I'm wearing adventure style boots and I can feel the heat coming through that. I've just moved my body weight there just to avoid that car. And literally uh, a move of my hips just told the bike where to go. So the bike, Overall, is very responsive. It's beautiful. Okay, don't laugh. Oh, he's off. <laughs> okay, I've dropped the bike. No shit, Batman. Because my boots caught in the rear pillion pegs. This is a problem, folks. Okay, all back to normal, and uh, thankfully not much damage. I've cracked the handguard. But uh, that's all. Thank God. So very, very well protected thanks to these handguards. We did land in the grass, so that was fine. But these things, folks, are a huge problem. So that's what brought me over. I got caught in the boots by this again. So as you can see, you can just remove these fairly easy to remove, but they are going to catch a lot more people out. They have to go. But thankfully, no other damage. Uh, and hopefully not my confidence either, because um, I am absolutely loving this bike. So without uh, further ado, let's get back on. As they say, when you fall off your bicycle, get straight back on and uh, ride again. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So that's the first spill I've ever had on any bike I've uh, had out on a test ride. And something really stupid. In fairness to myself, I should have pulled the jeans over the top of the boots to stop the uh, pillion peg catching as soon as I knew that that was a problem, which I did, you know. Uh, I knew it was a problem, but... So, I'm blaming myself more than anything else. Anyway. Let's have some fun. Let's get rid of that little memory there. That little mishap. I'm sure it could have been a lot worse. I'm pleased I didn't go over on uh, tarmac. At least we landed in soft grass. So I suppose the question left for me to answer is would I buy one of these? Short answer is yes, of course I would, in a heartbeat. What about that for a postcard scene? Um, I think this bike is brilliant. It has pretty much everything in bucket loads. I just wish I had it for longer than a day. I absolutely love this. I've had a great time riding it. Um, as I said earlier on in the review, it's a jack of all trades, but it seems to be the master of everything as well. 
great bike highly recommend it thanks once again to MAGA bikes for giving me the pleasure of riding it and uh, now I have to ride back to their shop and explain what happened to the handguard uh, they're a good bunch in there I'm sure they'll be fine and uh, thanks to you of course folks for coming along riding with me I hope you took something from this review if you did indeed enjoy this review please uh, consider liking and subscribing plenty more to come as always so for wheelie good tv over and out